Away from that, uh, you celebrated last week on Friday, the third decade since the December 3rd, 1991 return of multipartism following amendments of Section 2A of uh, the Kenyan's former constitution. After years of struggle that left several nationalists either arrested, maimed, or even dead. But who were the heroes of the struggle and what reflections do they have 30 years on? Murimi Mwangi explains on this special coverage, multipartism three decades later. The standard newspaper edition of the 4th of December 1991, the five-word headline summarizing the national celebratory spirit, climaxing two decades of fierce struggle for expansion of the democratic space. Since Kenya became a one-party state by law, following the August 1st, 1982 attempted coup, and it was not too hard to discern why the December 3rd, 1991 repeal of Section 2A of the Constitution, allowing return of multipartism, was received with as much enthusiasm. It was kind of a relic of the Communist parties of, that had decreed that there is only one party in their place, and that's the Communist Party. So in Kenya, it had become the only party is Kanu. So there was no... Uh, room for political ventilation. It is in this day where Moyan released early in the day uh, Raira Odinga and uh, Charles Rubia who had been held in committee at Naifasha. And uh, of course, Kenyans must remember that uh, Kenneth Stan and Jindo Matiba had been released earlier because of the stroke he had suffered in prison. Yet the story of this triumph cannot be told without mention of the massive blood and sweat. <laughs> Preceding this day characterized by years of police brutality, arrest, detention, and even torture of key multipartism crusaders. Details still fresh in the mind of former political detainee Njero Kadangu, arrested at the height of the fight for multipartism on the 11th of July 1990 at a bar in Dagoretikona on claims of sedition. Also arrested alongside him were George Anyona, Professor Edward Oyugi, and Professor Ngoto Kariuki. They would subsequently spend 15 days incarcerated in dark sealed basement cells before eventually being charged and convicted. Kenyans thought that uh, the reintroduction of multipartism would give us everything that we wanted. That became a pipe dream to this day that Kenyans, instead of experiencing 30 years, that is a whole generation of development, change of attitude and democratization, and if you like, creating patriotism in our citizens, we have reversed everything that we thought we have gained. There were those who benefited and uh, fitted in the new environment. They had been fighting for that opening of space. Since it was opened, they were forgotten. And um, not everybody got in, but some did get in. There are people who are very good at adjusting at the political environment. And uh, there are those who complain because they are not inside. Others who experienced the brute force of the state were opposition leader Raila Odinga, whose arrest and detention came earlier in 1982 after the attempted coup that saw him charged with treason and jailed for six years after months of torture. His father, the late Jeremogio Ginga Odinga, the late Charles Rubia, Kenneth Matiba, Masinda Muliro, Martin Shikuku, Ahmed Bamariz, George Ndenge, and such other young tags as Paul Muite, James Orengo, Martha Karua, Muhisa Kituyi, Gitobui Manyara, Kiraitu Murungi, Ajang Nyongo, and the late Michael Kijana Omalwa. A number of these subsequently served in political offices and even cabinet in the multipartism years following the 1992 polls, with a number of them still currently in leadership. But have three decades of multipartism really borne the anticipated fruits? If you look at Kenya today, more than 30 million people are actually doing nothing. That is where you find that Raira Akienda Pahari, Jumatatu, kuna watu wameja. Jumaine Uruto anaenda pahari, watu wameja. Jumatano Musari Mudavadi anaenda pahari, watu wameja. Why? Because the youth have got no job 
at all. At the time of his death in December 2019, Rubia was still fighting for his 40 billion shillings compensation over his torture. Rubia had sued the state saying his business, health and family had been devastated after his arrest, detention and torture. A sad ending also shared by the family of Matiba which buried him yet to receive some 1.5 billion shillings awarded by then High Court Judge Isaac Lenaola in 2017 for his arrest and torture, a figure which had accumulated interest to total over 1.7 billion shillings by the time of his death in 2018. And as the country gears up for the August 2022 polls, Tukadangu and others, it's yet another flip on the calendar, waiting for their sweat and blood for multipartism to bear fruit. Muremi Mwangi, KTN News.